Hey Internet, welcome to Worldview Everlasting, your favorite YouTube addiction. And as you can tell, we've got a little bit of a different setup today, trying something new. <gasps> Whether we do this again or not, I don't know. But there was a question that came through the, uh, the email feed a couple weeks ago that as we were looking at it as a group, uh, we decided that when Peter, who you know is our editor, uh, was up here to help set up the cameras and whatnot and get us back to where we want to be, um, might have something to say too, and that uh, Pastor Matt Richard, who many of you may not know his face, but you know his his blog and his PM notes. No, he's um, been a guest on the show. A couple he has times. been a guest on the show, yeah. but yeah. you know, may not know him. Um, he's a local guy uh, up here where, in North Dakota with me. Um, might also have something to say too, and so we thought that rather than just do this as a regular show, uh, we'd have a little just sit down roundtable discussion on the question itself, and so. Uh, that's why we're here. That's what this episode is going to be about. So you can listen to the question and decide whether to turn it off right now or not. <laughs> Let us know um, in the comments what you think about this kind of format if you want yep. us to do more of it. Uh, oh, what's wrong with you? Uh, it's either this show or indigestion. I hope it's indigestion. Why? It'll get better in a little while. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Let us know now before we actually have the discussion. If you and, can. Yeah, you know, don't watch the whole thing and then comment. Oh, yeah. It's. Thanks. So here's the question. Uh, is Dear Pastor Fisk, I am a recent... Recent. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ladies. And hey, ladies. <laughs> Look at that cat. <laughs> Dear Pastor Fisk, I am a recent convert to Lutheranism from a Reformed background. Let me tell you, PTL. Parent, teacher, associate, what is that? I don't know, former evangelical. TL? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> we both got it. We both got it. Like, yep, dude. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yep. Possibly <laughs> even raising her hands when she said it. The PTL association was like the parent teacher <laughs> leaders or something like that. Like that's how you like help your kids in different grade schools, the PTL. No, no, PTA. PTA? Yeah. I swear it was a PTL. Anyway, um, smiley face. My question is this. Why does the LCMS choose to refrain from communing with other word-confessing and sacrament-clinging Lutherans? I am a member of the AFLC who are on good terms with y'all. Y'all. I actually say that too. I just think it's funny to write it out. Um, I know we can have a slightly pietistic bent, uh, insert exasperated, sigh, yeah, you got it. All right. But it seems to be very tempered by the true Lutheran confessions. Well, why can I not commune with you? Um, and again, like, so we're, we're looking at this as a group through our, our email feed, and we all agreed. It's like, it's a really good question. It's mm -hmm. an important question and one that maybe doesn't get answered enough. There are probably some assumptions behind the question uh, that we will we'll need to bring out. Um, but it sort of is, it, it begs the question, so what does it mean to actually be a Lutheran, and what is a, a Lutheran church body? Um, why would two bodies that both say they're Lutheran and both say they believe in the Word of God and both say that the Lutheran confessions are the subscription, why on earth would they not just be the same church body? Yeah. And like that seems really simple on one level. I think that it's it's it can be simple on one level, but it can also be a, a tremendously political, complicated question as well. So we're going to try to come at it from a couple different angles. Uh, today. And uh, the first one, in short, is, is the assumption in the question itself, which I, I do, I think it's going to come down to this ultimately too. Why does the LCMS choose to refrain from communing with other word-confessing, sacrament-clinging Lutherans? Why? Because we would believe that even though that they say they are word-confessing, they are not confessing a certain part of the word that is um, uh, of, of a fellowship nature. It is central mm -hmm. enough to what we believe, teach, and confess that we don't think they, they have it. And so I'm going to use an example that's not from either of, of these groups initially, and that would be the Wisconsin Synod, which has got many faithful Lutheran members and pastors in it. The acronym all. would be WELLS, W-E-L-S, w -E -L -S, yep. if you see that online. Um, I believe that they're, we believe they're all Christians. Uh, we believe they're going to be with us in paradise, and yet we do not commune with them because we believe that there is a very significant breach of truth between us. One of us is right, and one of us is wrong on this matter. And that matter is the nature of the, the predictant, the preaching office, uh, the, the office of the ministry, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. we'll, I'll maybe come back to later, is one of the six chief parts in the catechism for us. And you, you see this immediately, if you, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Wells Catechism. Mm -hmm. We've got six questions and answers on Article 5, and they've got three. Mm -hmm. They don't subscribe to the other three, which maybe Luther didn't write them himself, and that's where they would go with it. But we would say, 
Yeah, but they were published in his lifetime and they actually represent what a, the confessions and the scriptures yeah. say. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. But so there you got groups that would hold to everything that um, would make a Lutheran officially and yet when that rubber hits the road, it, it doesn't quite get there, right? Mm -hmm. I, I asked this very same question myself. Uh, for those of you viewers, I actually was in the AFLC for 10 years. Um, when I got married back in 2001, up until I joined Bethany Lutheran Church a couple years ago, my wife and I, actually my wife grew up in that church body, and so this was actually a pretty burning question for me as I was becoming an actual Lutheran. And I will say, uh, having been a member in the AFLC for you know the vast majority of that time, I wasn't actually a Lutheran. I would have definitely been still in the American evangelical right. category. That's how I grew up, you know, first 20 25 so years not officially life. an evangelical, but diagnosing diagnosing your theology. Oh, evangelical. Yeah, theology. Very much so. It was. Uh, I mean, we'll we'll talk about this a little bit. It was actually very easy for me to move into the AFLC as a non-Lutheran. Um, I, I actually didn't really have to struggle with a whole lot, uh, and we'll talk about this too. You know, that depends on the church you move into. The church that we right. moved into, it didn't really. You know, baptism saves. Yeah. Okay. You know, maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. We're not going to talk about that. We're not going to fight about it. Uh, communion, if you think it's symbolic, that's okay, we have open communion. As long as you believe in Jesus, right. come up and commune. And so I will say for myself, joining the AFLC, it, it wasn't hard. It was a very easy transition uh, into Lutheranism, into mm -hmm. Lutheran thought, uh, because I didn't actually have to do much. This question, this very same question, I asked probably five or six years ago is when I really started digging into it, trying to, I really needed to get the answers because I would come up against my LCMS friends, of which I have many, um, and at the time had many too, and it was a big sticking point. You guys are jerks. Right. You won't commune other people. You're. I'm a Lutheran. You're a Lutheran. We both believe in Jesus. Right. You're just mean. Right. And right. and those words actually came out of my mouth. I have a LCMS pastor friend of mine who commented one of the last times we were together. I wish I had recorded some of our conversations with mm. you. You know, back when he was in college, pre sem, about to head off to. LCMS seminary in St. Louis and you know the arguments that we had had because he's like you're saying the exact opposite now yeah, you're, you're now right. saying what I used to say your, your, your answer there does bring up another part of the question which is what what is closed communion mm -hmm. why would you ever practice that you know it must be just because you're mean right yeah I mean I, I, I we, we did it in Bible study a couple weeks ago here we, we, we were asking about it and so I, I we talked about it and one of the main points I try to get across is I don't practice this because I want to like yeah, this is the yeah. most annoying thing yeah. the Bible teaches, uh, and because it, it, it just it just it is hurtful, to, especially to Americans, where it's so individualistic. Yeah. So why would churches not commune at all together? That's a whole other question. In short, the answer is because they are of such a disagreement on what the Word of God says about substantial central issues that the one person or the one group is therefore underneath a a false teacher and must be called to repentance over that. Otherwise, the Lord's Supper is potentially damaging to them. Not necessarily damaging to them, right? They're mm -hmm. not necessarily unworthy. It's not a guarantee. Right? Mm -hmm. But that there is there is a threat there of um, uh, uh, helping someone to stay in their false belief. And if, if only that false belief is, flee false teachers, no, I don't have to do that. <laughs> right? Which is a, a tremendously dangerous false belief. Yeah. So there, there's that issue. And then, Matt, I know you initially, uh, when you saw this question, you had some ideas about, like, mm -hmm. well, let's define mm -hmm. professional Lutheran, right? Mm -hmm. What does that term mean? Right. Do you want to talk right. about that for a sec? Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Uh, you know, I'll just back up just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, my context, you know, Peter comes in from the AFLC, and, uh, you know, it's been about, coming up on two years that I've been a part of the LC LCMS. By the and, way, we should probably define AFLC. AFLC. Association yep. of Free Lutheran Congregations. Right, so, right. AFLC. Right, and I was part of the Church of Lutheran Brethren for, boy, I was, you know, ever since my birth. Right. And uh, so I was a pastor with them for 10 plus years as an ordained pastor. And so when I came into the Missouri Center, and we, we should back up a little bit here too on this, uh, this question assumes that the LCMS is the one that's initiating, say, no, you can't be a part of it. Right. Lutheran Brethren historically, right. uh, historically did not want anything to do with the Missouri Synod. And I'm not sure even if my, my good friends of the Lutheran Brethren realize that, but uh, back in the 1900s, you had this thing called the Anti-Missourian Brotherhood. Nice. And it was, that was LB was? 
came out. Well, well actually, that was the, their youth group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they actually found the founding fathers of the Church of Lutheran Brethren. They attended uh, St. Olaf's College in Minnesota, uh-huh. yeah. and that was the headquarters of a group of Norwegian wow. uh, Norwegian Lutherans, and they formed this brotherhood. It was called the Ant. I mean, think about everything. Yeah, the right. Anti-Missourian Brotherhood. And so this idea that the Missouri was, you know, was the bad guys trying right. to keep them out. Uh, historically, the Lutheran Brethren, the early Lutheran Brethren at least, they didn't want anything to do with Missouri. Mm. And so we got to keep that in mind too, that it goes both ways. Right. Yeah. Um, so you have a little bit of that. Now, who chooses this? Right, yeah. right. Which and, gets back to the fellowship, how do church bodies talk to each other? A church right. body isn't a person. Right. It's, it's really complicated on that <laughs> right, level. Yeah, right. I don't even want to go there, yeah. but, it's, but it's something and, to be acknowledged. And I know for myself, too, uh, you know, I, I was attending for my, my D-Men studies, uh, doctorate men. I should explain that, too. Yeah. The doctor, I don't acronyms, have a D-Men. So yeah, D-Men. Yeah. Acronyms. D-Men is a doctorate Ex- ministry. Exit Jesus? Yeah, yeah. Exit Jesus. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> right, right. So um, when I was doing my studies down in St. Louis, um, I chose not to, uh, you know, be a part of the communion at all because I realized, hey, I'm part of Lutheran Brother in Missouri Synod. There were major differences between right. the two denominations. And right. that's just acknowledging that. Uh, it's being truthful. It's being right. people of integrity. Right. And by us just saying, no, we're all on the same page when we're really not. Right. Um, I the, think that, the theology of the lowest common denominator. Right, right, yeah. right. And well, I, don't, I don't think it does justice to actually acknowledging that, hey, there are differences. Right. And that's and, what I was trying to, you said that really well. I was, we were talking a little before we started uh, filming about understanding that communion Fellowship and communion itself isn't about me and Jesus. Right. And and that's lost in this question. It's not a potluck. Yeah. No, you know, exactly. You know, exactly. It's, it's not a potluck. And, and I said that with my children's lesson here uh, uh, the other day when I was talking to the kids, you know, that it's not a potluck. This is the Lord's meal for us. You know, so it's not like a, a fellowship meal where we all just kind of come and have kumbaya. It's right. the Lord ministering word and sacrament. If we have differences... Uh, boy, we, we need to talk that through before we just sweep it under the carpet right. and say that we're all on the same page. Particularly if those differences are of such a nature that they infect what we're confessing about the sacrament right? or the service going around that sacrament, which is word and sacrament, which is right. what those six chief parts are actually confessing, right? right? right. Small catechism is basically church happening, right. right? We believe these things are real here now. yeah. And if you don't, then we'll embrace that, own that. We're wrong. We're the heretics. Fine. I'll admit that for the sake of conversation, you know. Right. Um, but let's be honest let's, about it. Let's be open. Let's be uh, yeah. open and honest about yeah. that yeah. and admit the difference and then don't pretend it's not there impacting what is taking place in that Lord's Supper by letting leaven in the lump right. one way or the other. And if you believe I'm a heretic... Why would you want to commune with me anyway? Right, right. Why would you even want to come and let's right. have this supper together? Well, but there is a point at which you would have to have a Lutheran understanding of the supper to ask this question. Because if the yeah. supper is just a symbol and an internal right. remembrance, remembrance of God, uh, then so what? Right. Right? Yeah. right. And if it's not going orally into a person and a Hindu is just not getting anything, well, what's the big deal? Right. So it is, it is a Lutheran question. Uh, right. Ultimately, mm-hmm. right. Rome would ask it too, I should say. Right, but you know, back to back to back to the question there before, and thinking about it, uh, defining Lutheran. I think right. that's that. You know, and that boy, that, that's just that's a whole right. other episode. Um, <laughs> it is. I'm, I'm reminded yeah. of. We have uh, a couple of those. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm reminded of uh, our district president here of North Dakota. He he presented a, a, at our convention here last January on um, Lutheran DNA. Wait, you brown nose him. Yeah. <laughs> you, Jim, I hope you're watching yes. this. I really do. <laughs> oh my. Okay, but it was good though. It was good. It was good. He was talking about Lutheran DNA and, and he laid out this Lutheran DNA and I thought it was very, very helpful. It was very objective. Uh, boy, if I can remember from the top of my, my you got memory. It on a paper right yeah. there. Yeah, well, I was going to try to try to look all professional. And do oh, no, no, I got a computer. I'm just, okay. We got screens. Right. Let's use okay. them. Well, you guys got your computers. I got a little white sheet of paper here. <laughs> Um, yeah, so he got seven and that he actually presented at the uh, mm-hmm. conference of convention. He said number one was Christ centered. And well, what do we mean by that? I mean, that's a boy, that's a load of things. A lot of people say that. Yeah, yeah, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're focused on Jesus and serving him. Right. Or it's right. about Christ for me, serving me. I mean, right. so, so Christ centered. Uh, number two was that the word is the only source and norm for doctrine. Uh, and then sacramentally focused, number three. Number four, uh, we're a preaching church. Number five, we adhere to the confessions. Six were liturgical, and seven about mercy, compassion to our neighbor. Now, I, I mean, like I said, that we can 
take take two three hours on that. But the on point each one on each one. But the point <laughs> being is, if you look at those seven things, I think it kind of captures a good Lutheran DNA. And I know for myself, when I was in Lutheran Brethren, I would say, well, hey, you know, we're not liturgical, right? So we dis disregard that. We would not adhere to uh, the whole of the Book of Concord. Mm -hmm. We would only, we would only hold to the the small catechism and the Oxford Confession. Confession. And even yeah. the Oxford Confession, there were things in the Lutheran Brethren statement of faith that was in disagreement with the Oxford right. Confession, like. Right. Uh, the end times. And so you have yeah. those two things. And then the focus on the sacraments. And I don't know about you, Peter, too, but uh, I know the Lutheran Brethren was a de-emphasis of the sacraments. And that mm -hmm. comes from the Lutheran pietism mm -hmm. uh, that I came out of. And so... Which did impact Missouri. Yeah. And has left a mark here. Yeah. So we're not we're without it. But at least we would say we're all about being a sacramental church. Right. Body. Our right. confessions still, right. and our, our statements of faith still, yeah. right. still say that. But on paper, the Lutheran brother, and I know when, as a Lutheran brother and pastor, I acknowledge that, hey, I am not on the same page as Missouri. And when I started realizing, hey, I'm more on the same page with Missouri than the Lutheran Brethren, Maybe. that's what led yeah. me to colloquize, right. which uh, right. the big fancy word is just basically jumping ship and joining another ship. Right, quitting. Quitting. <laughs> <laughs> Quitting and Desertion. Yeah. Desertion. I still, I still, I still have a lot of, I, and Lutheran Brethren friends. I have a lot of Lutheran Treason. Brethren friends. I still, <laughs> not a, I still keep in contact with them and we're, we're good friends. Now, but, but yes, I, I, I shifted, I know for myself, uh, wanted to have a much more sacramental focus of, of, uh, of baptism mm -hmm. and communion was mm -hmm. much more front and center. Uh, the office of the keys and the liturgy. Those mm -hmm. were huge things that uh, I simply could not practice in the Lutheran Brethren because it wasn't a part of the Lutheran Brethren right. DNA or yeah, ethos. Right. Right. So. And so now these same ideas, I know when you saw these with your background in the AFLC, which is where the question is coming from, yeah. you said same thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, we, we talked a little, I've talked about this before, but I think we were talking about it at lunch. It's, so why would I go to the LCMS? We have our issues. You know, we are not, and we are not a denomination that is. You're not talking free. about Todd. <laughs> Todd Logan. Well, those are issues. We do have. He has his own issues. Yeah, he has his yeah. own issues. <laughs> which you should watch. We're generally okay with those issues, Please and continue. we highly recommend that show for all of you. Um, AFLC, CLBA, whatever. Um, Jeff, was that a good enough product placement for you? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Talk radio for the thinking Christian. Issues etc. Org. When I was in the AFLC and becoming confessional, you know, what, you know, the, the sacraments are important now. Um, it's not about my subjective experience. You know, that's very much a part of American evangelicalism. That was part of the easy transition into the AFLC. It's very much part of your subjective experience, being a better person. Um, you know, starting to look at what are those foundational documents that formed the AFLC, the, the individuals who form the AFLC. Mm -hmm. St. Olaf College, uh, mm -hmm. Sverdrup was one of the main guys yep. there as well, and he's one of the main guys that didn't found the AFLC as a group. They were back in 1962, 64, you know, now we're getting really detailed yeah, sure. uh, and whatnot there unnecessarily so, but, you know, the Norwegian Pietists, you know, right. let's kind of go with them. Um, the foundation was very much, uh, no, we're not going for pure doctrine. We're going for good practice. And that was pure living, pure living. Yep. You know, we want that pure living. That is the emphasis that we want to have. And so you look back and say, who's got a faithful confession from the beginning? And I looked and said, okay, well, the LCMS started off really solid and still has that faithful confession. And there are good, solid people adhering to that confession, calling for reform. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to it. And I looked around in the AFLC, and I have many wonderful pastors, friends, members mm -hmm. of the AFLC who also love that pure confession, who right. want to have that, who are striving for it. The problem is they have to create something new in order to do that. Mm -hmm. There, There is no reforming because they're not going back to something that the AFLC previously had. They actually have to start something new. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we, we got to the point where we were leaving our congregation and looking around, okay, where are we going to go? We join the LCMS because there is a battle being fought. It's a good one, and it's for reform, and there is progress being made and wonderful stuff there. But the confession itself on paper and practice in many areas was was faithful. Well, and, and But I think at, at heart of that, whether it's faithful or not, it was a different confession. Yeah. And so the AFLC has a different confession than we do, even though both groups say we are confessional yeah. Lutherans. Mm -hmm. Now, this 
gets even deeper and creates more problems when, when I would go so far as to say that within the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod itself, you have different groups who say, I am a confessional Lutheran, who do not agree with each other. And you can get even, on one hand, you have the revivalists who somehow still want to be us. I don't understand why, but they do. At this point in the service, we usually like to do a song that you might have heard on the radio or in a movie, and you wouldn't call it a worship song, but it ties into the message. And uh, this week we're talking about acceptance, being liked, and everyone just saying that thing, something like, I want you to want me. Run away! Run away! Run away! And then you have the confessional Lutherans, but both say, well, we hold the confessions, we're confessional. And then within the confessional Lutherans, you have groups that they're liturgical, they're sacramental, they're Christ-centered, the word is the only way, uh, they preach, right? And they, they are believe mercy is a good thing, and yet we can fight with each other about law and gospel and about yeah. legalism or antinomianism and, and even get quite aggressive with each other over that. And so it's not like the Missouri's sitting here with this great, we figured it all out. Yeah. As well, long as you on, got the label confession or, on paper, you're good. Yeah. In Missouri, at least, it's well, we all agree to what we've said on paper to be yep. what holds us together. And we are more than happy to be in fellowship with other church bodies that would agree to that same basic set. And the ones that we're not in agreement with, so far as those church bodies' leaderships politically have been able to de hash it out, they haven't come to the same conclusion. Yeah, and right. so what you're saying is, well, Lutheran Brethren, yeah, of course not, because we're just not there. AFLC, well, we weren't really supposed to be there. There's some people who maybe want to be there, yeah. but it's not what we started right. with, right? Um, and so it's it, it's not like, though, we're sitting here saying, well, LCMS is so hot, and you at your AFLC congregation that fully agrees with those seven points that Pastor Richard just pointed out, um, you're not real Lutheran. We're not saying that either. We're saying that there is discussion that needs to happen before we go to the Lord's table and right. confess that we're one. We gotta. We, we want to know we're still one. And that discussion isn't between me and you. It's between us and yes, y'all, <laughs> as you said, right? right. And uh, and that's that's a key piece of the theology, the, the yeah. corporate nature of this right. entire thing. Well, which presents an entirely different problem for the AFLC specifically, which is congregational. And each congregation is militantly autonomous on its own right on its Which, own they are their own thing and so yeah. you cannot have any confession and this is part of the, another reason i left the aflc you cannot have a confession that is binding on the entire church body that comes from anywhere other than every single congregation saying yes we believe that and even then it's not actually binding, binding. because mm -hmm. if that congregation says no actually we're going to change it slightly well they're autonomous they have the freedom to which do is that. how I'm going to go ahead and use your history you and yeah. cut it out if you want, but part of your family's leaving that congregation, well, congregation was when that congregation drove out a pastor, two pastors, two pastors for teaching infant baptism. Baptism saves and preaching that you're a sinner in need of repentance and forgiveness right. from the pulpit. Right. And that because the congregation <laughs> by itself decided we don't want to let that happen, they were free within that body to take that decision. And were supported and, by the leadership. Right. Which... Of See, fr from a Missouri Synod point of view, at least, that structure itself is a breach of, of church. And so how could we be in agreement with a body or be in communion fellowship with a body that is unable to, to uh, reprimand false teaching? Right. Uh, now, that doesn't mean we aren't going to reprimand false teaching. We've got our own issues. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, think, I, think, I think the key that we have to realize is that uh, fundamentally you can have a difference. If you think about those, the, the core documents, let's just use the word core documents or the foundation uh, there's a fundamentally a difference between two denominations that have different foundational documents. Mm. I mean, we have to acknowledge that. Right. And then there's also on the other side where you have the same foundational document, but then you have some argument going on and understanding and interpreting that. that those are two different fundamental, different ways right. of looking at things. And so, uh, for instance, like the Lutheran Brethren or the AFLC, uh, you know, some of these other Lutheran denominations, they fundamentally have different or a different yeah. foundation yeah. and that's all we're saying is we have to be honest that they're different right uh, and what we're saying here with the, the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate we have a core document structure of the right. Book of Concord and so forth but we will often find up here all the struggles in right. how that works itself out right and I think it's fundamentally two different ways of looking at it right like yeah. Hit on earlier. yeah, I think that uh, for the most part, uh, we've answered the questions that, that I'm concerned with at least floating. I don't think that in any way we've really answered the question because it, <laughs> it's so complicated. But hopefully, 
you asking it, this this lets you into the, the picture of the of the problem, right? That the it's just not an easy thing to say, well, the LCMS chose this. Well, no, what the LCMS is doing is trying to be faithful to his confession, which is to be faithful to the scriptures. Um, and I would hope that any Christian in their body or in their congregation wants that yeah. would for do their the same body. Thing. With their, well, yes, yeah. from their own yeah. perspective. So you do have churches whose confession is that we shouldn't have confessions, right? And so they're going to struggle with us and think we're just mean because they yeah. can't even see where we're coming from, right? Mm -hmm. And then that American ethos has infiltrated most American congregations, no matter what body you're part of, and mm -hmm. I would say the LCMS has its own struggle with that problem, in spite of us having a confession that mm -hmm. we should, uh, that, that would yeah. not let us be in that problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think to help answer the question too, what helped me in that transition was being honest, like we've been saying, being honest about the differences. So when I realized, no, there are true differences between the LCMS and the AFLC, when I began to really understand what the Lord's Supper is, mm -hmm. who should commune with each other, how that works scripturally, what scripture says about who should commune with who, right. or whom, I can never get that right. Always say to whom, don't ever say to whom. I actually became okay with the idea of closed communion. Mm -hmm. And I could go to my LCMS friends' churches as a member of the AFLC, even though I was becoming much more confessional, really moving in that direction. Right. And sitting there in the pew and not commune and actually have a sense of peace and right. just, mm -hmm. this is right. Right. Uh, not that I'm using my emotions to judge things, but, you know, no, that, but, but, th there's that sense where it's, there's the comfort level of like, yeah. this is okay, this is good, and I'm happy that I'm here right. and they're happy and we're actually more in fellowship in a sense right. with each other right. because we recognize those differences. The, the right. new catechumenate right. in the ancient church was not, not only allowed to commune, as adults who've converted and been baptized, well, maybe not baptized, depends, um, but who've been converted, who are believers, confessing believers, um, they were not only not allowed to commune, they couldn't be in the presence of the Lord's Supper. They couldn't even watch it. It was a separate room yeah. everybody yeah. would go to. And yet that didn't mean that they weren't wanted. Right. It meant that they need to be brought further into the teaching. Yeah. Right. And so uh, if our bodies need to be brought further into the teaching to agreement, that's how we hash out, you know, what is our problem? Um, to do that, you have to first admit that there's a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and closed communion is, is just that. It's saying there is a problem between our bodies. We are we are not reconciled theologically. And unfortunately with the AFLC, that conversation can't actually because happen. Because you can't have a representation for the whole body. There is nothing that will ever yeah. be binding for the AFLC. So that in those in that two then that relationship it'll never it'll never happen, unfortunately. All right, so if you like what we've been doing here today, uh, let us know. Uh, you know, past, uh, Peter can't be here all the time, but Pastor Rich is down the road. I've thought we might get Danzer or Moline in here as well mm -hmm. and do this kind of thing about some other topic. Um, mm -hmm. So let us know if you like this. It's a little longer show, a little less monkey going on. When I'm driving, I like to play it safe. That's why I never text and drive. With my trunk monkey, I can send hands-free texts. Send. I'm running late. I'll be there in 10 minutes. Bananas, bananas, bananas. Uh, let us know in the comments. Give us some feedback. Uh, uh, as always, Lutheran Ninja Clan, thanks for doing what you do. Five bucks a month or more uh, keeps this kind of stuff going on. And this um, is a great example yeah. of some of the new stuff yep. that we can do with, with the funding that we have. Yeah, you know. being able to bring you up here to fix the problem, which you should be shown in the next couple of weeks uh, uh, with the, the footage that's coming out. Uh, uh, so that, thank you. You guys are making yeah. that possible. Um, I do have one more question I want to I wanna get resolved. Uh, before we leave, though, uh -huh. that is, Matt, are you still teaching false doctrine? <laughs> <laughs> and Jonathan is all out of energy, so this has been WeTV. Rock on. <laughs> <laughs>